Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're talking about something called Noesis GUI. More specifically, we're talking about Noesis Studio, which just launched in free beta today. You want to go ahead and check it out, you can download it freely. I will have relevant links down below. They just reached out to me to sponsor this video so I can show you Noesis Studio and I think it's going to blow your mind. But first I want to start off with a little bit of an overview of Noesis GUI. Now this is what you're seeing running in the background. These are games that were created and authored using the Noesis set of tools. and uh, there's a couple of small indie titles you may have heard of. Low budget stuff. Things like, you know, Baldur's Gate 3. So this is a very battle tested tool. It works with both uh, Unity and Unreal Engine. On top of that, it's also got a lightweight C++ runtime that you can integrate into whichever game engine you wish. Either your own or another third party. So this is designed to be basically a drop in UI framework. But it's also got all these tools in place. Especially what we're going to see today with Noesis Studio that make an artist's life so so much nicer. So what you see in front of you, this is the brand new Noesis Studio. Again, you can download this completely free. If you are a Noesis customer, there's no upgrade cost for this. It's basically just a free add-on that makes their product even better. This is replacing a product called Microsoft Blend, although I do believe you could still use Microsoft Blend going forward because ultimately what you're authoring here is something called XAML, X-A-M-L files. And that cool thing about using XAML for your UI layering is it's a text-based format. So it'll play nice with your source code, your version, control and all that stuff. And you can see an example of it. Let's go ahead and preview it. The cool thing with uh, the studio here is it's actually got the Noesis GUI runtime built into it. So what you see is what you get. You can actually see the results as they will, will actually end up looking. On top of that, you've actually got a uh, hot reload going. So if you've got things running, say, in uh, the Unreal Game Engine, you can make edits in Noesis Studio and see those updates as you do them, which is also very cool. So you saw here, we had a little animation as we open this one up. And let's go take a look at exactly how that happens. So you're going to notice here, this is made up of a number of different controls. So you can see your navigator here. This is kind of an overview of your project. It is built down into, so you got the background areas, you got, uh, you know, some images being done there. You got the smoke being uh, overlaid and so on. Uh, and then we've got this here, which is your character areas. Uh, and what you'll actually notice is you can actually drill into these and you see that they are actually uh, nested XAML files within your other XAML, which is very cool. So it kind of makes it so you can split your work out or people can work on one area and well, someone works on another area, makes things reusable uh, and nicely modular in that regard. Another thing you'll notice over here is we have this nice preview. So if you're working on a mobile device and a desktop game, you can check them out. You can also check them in various different resolutions, see how they would look there. Uh, again, mobile versus desktop. Uh, and uh, it's a nice, just straightforward editing environment. Move something around, literally move it. You'll notice you have snapping tools as you are moving things around. All right, so we also have undo, which is nice. Now you're gonna notice as I select things over here, over here, you have your various different properties that are available. I'll get into data binding a lot more in a different portion here, but you see everything is, again, if you've got alignment or, or arrangements, you can just drag and drop standard controls over here. And speaking of controls, we'll get back to that in just a second as well. Now we've got other things here. I did mention that earlier animation when we first started this. So boom, you can notice the fog, the fade in and so on. Well, that is all being controlled via the animation set here. So you see your storyboard here, screen in, everything in the scene can be animated. So you see here your content animated, your content area, for example, is invisible when we first start things up and then we'll go ahead and play that. You'll see a keyframe here and then a keyframe here as it fades the opacity. So you see here, the opacity is being keyframed over time using this curve over here, these values right here. So you got some, so full opacity, one down here, and then you've got partial opacity. Oh, I actually got none. So it's fading from zero to one over this particular timeline. So all of your stuff can be animated uh, with, a, you know, a very recognizable normal timeline. Now, speaking of all of the things in your world, let's go back up here and take a look at what kind of controls this comes with out of the box, because quite frankly, it's a lot of them. So here are your elements that are available. You see, you've got a variety of different things for doing your layout. And that's obviously important if you're working with multiple different devices, multiple different resolutions and so on. All of these things that, you know, automatically expand the size or grid-based layout or view box docking and so on. And then you got a variety of different buttons and text fields, including, you know, masked out password fields. Uh, then we've got a uh, variety of different content. You can create a number of different collections, things like uh, menus and drop downs, toolbars and so on. Uh, range things like sliders and scroll bars, shapes, 
everything here can be done with the vectors, which is very useful because you can then draw, um, you know, at a resolution independent manner. You can also um, copy and paste in results from other tools, uh, SVG format or from Adobe Illustrator. So if you've created your vector in another application, you can literally just paste it in and go from there. A number of templating tools, uh, a variety of different uh, dials and health bars and so on, and then a variety of miscellaneous things. By the way, you can also create these yourself, and I'll show you a couple of these in just a minute, how you can customize and create your own controls. So you can have your developer or your visual guy create these things and your artist use them, reuse them across your uh, entire project, uh, which again is pretty powerful on how that works. Now, of course, when it comes to the world of game UI, the front end is only part of the story. You've actually got to hook up to your game's data at some point in time, right? And that's where Noises Studio actually has you covered as well. It uses something called a view model. It's a way of abstracting between the data on the back end and the presentation on the front end. It's very, very familiar to you if you are from the world of web development. See over here, uh, you've got this view model here, and this is the data set that is driving this particular demo. So you see here, we've got things like the time of day, the speed, the fuel available and so on, as well as the gear you're currently in. So let's go ahead and run this. And then you're gonna see here, if I select the data over here, you can see the live data as it's updating. And then what I can actually do, so I wanna increase the speed, I can increase the speed. If I wanna run out of fuel, I can change the fuel amount here. And you see it immediately updates. The same way here, I can switch between uh, the uh, gears. You see how it's updating accordingly. So here, switch to gear two, and boom, gear two is then updated. The cool thing here is you can actually have a live refresh directly to your game, but you can also create these data sets. And what it allows you to do is have your artists to have data to interact with, so they can have their interactive UI that is accurate to, uh, you know, it updates when you change your data, everything is set up accordingly, and they can play around, but they don't have to go and knock on the door of your developer and say, I need new data, I need fresh data, or whatever. They could just do it straight up with this data set, this view model, Model available in the middle. Very powerful functionality. Again, all available under this data tab over here. Now, another aspect of any game UI, so we've got the uh, presentation done, we've got the data binding done. Well, what are you going to actually do when the user does something? Well, here we are in another example here, and we'll go ahead and we'll just run this. By the way, uh, Noesis Studio comes with a ton of examples. There's more than a half a dozen to play through. These are all shipped with it. Everything you saw today is available. So this is your typical lobby setup. So you want to switch through, display things, uh, have uh, various different uh, menu options available and so on and your typical navigation. Now, this would be what actually triggers your event. So you're going to actually go in your game. So if you had, you know, they come in and press play and they pick a single player game, well, what is that going to do? Well, that is all actually firing off events. So you see over here, interactivity, and that is all handled here. So you've got things like events that happen here. Like, for example, when this video ends, uh, we'll play it again. You've got that event right there. But then you've got these events that uh, fire into your game as well. So you can basically trigger off an event that then your game code handles and knows, okay, start a single player game, etc. And all of those events are set up and fired here. They can be uh, done with conditions, various different actions can be run. So you have your event handling here that then on your game logic side, you can handle it however you wish. But the creation of those events is all handled in Noesis Studio as well. In the next demo, we've actually got something really cool I alluded to earlier on, and that is that you can actually create these reusable components. These, uh, All these down here, all these um, knobs and shifts like altimeter, pitch, and V-speed and so on, these are actually just nested controls. So you can actually have uh, your programmer, or your designer or whatever, create these UI elements, and then they can be easily reused across your project. So for example, here, let's go check out uh, pitch. So you see over here with the pitch controller or here, uh, each one of these, you'll see different values applied to it. So this one's got an airspeed value that you can set, and we can actually drill into this. And what you'll see, this is actually, again, it's just nested XAML. So this is uh, an entire um, control that basically was created. You could create these and then embed them into other projects. So you see up here, instrument speedometer.xaml. So you could create these um, components individually and reuse them to your heart's content across your project. Again, another powerful capability. And again, being XAML, it is text-based, so you can uh, have it into your version control. Everything is safe in that regard. Now, up to this point in time, we focused on vector-based graphics, and that totally makes sense because they scale up infinitely. They're wonderful for doing your UI work, but sometimes you want to work with pixel art as well. And what you're seeing here in front, this is something called a nine slice. Basically, it's cut corner, corner, top, corner, 
bottom, side, and side into nine different pieces. And what it enables you to do is to scale it up uh, so you can treat pixel art almost like you would with vector graphics. Let me just go ahead and show you this in action. So here we see we're running this and now I'm going to scale out the text. And you see as the text expands, the uh, surrounding nine slice expands with it. We can go the other way as well. So there you see. So even uh, if you're working with pixel art as opposed to vector graphics, no assist has you covered there. There's another pixel based demonstration in here as well. It's showcasing kites uh, and some animations, etc. This one is smoothly interpolated. This one is a linear animation. Once again, this is done via the animations tab available over here. So you see here, uh, we've got the two sets of tights. This one is the linear animated one right there. And then over here, this one is the interpolated one. And again, if you've used any kind of video editor for setting keyframes, you're going to be immediately comfortable with this. There's actually a couple of cool things else that are built in here that I haven't touched on yet, such as this. So I'm going to grab uh, these two characters. So let's grab the characters right there. What you notice over here is I have some settings I can work with on them like here. So I could actually add special effects like a blur, uh, pixelation, noise, and so on. So there's a ton of tools in here uh, beyond just the layout tools we talked earlier on. And as you can see, you can easily work with pixel art or vector art, whichever one fits your project better. So if you're interested in learning more, what you should do is head on over to noesisengine.com. So N-O-E-S-I-S -S, uh, engine.com. You're going to see here, you can actually go ahead and download it uh, and check it out for yourself. Again, it's available for Unity and Unreal Engine. There is also a managed SDK. So if you are working with uh, C Sharp and WPF, you can implement it that way. And there is a native C++ uh, SDK, so you can in integrate this into whichever game engine you desire. Again, this thing is very fast, very lightweight, and it has been battle tested. So you got a bit of an overview here again of how all of the pieces work together. So all your assets come in, your vectors, your images, your fonts, your uh, movies, and so on. And then in the middle, you've got NoAssist GUI here. This is where your XAML files are created. So the NoAssist Studio ultimately creates those XAML files. That is the output of this. So there's where you do things, layouts, interactions, animations, and so on. And you also have your data context. That is the view model we looked at earlier on. And then that binds to the various different pieces. So it binds to the C-sharp uh, side of Unity or C++ of Blueprints for Unreal Engine, or of course, to your own custom engine. Each one of these has their own data engine that talks to that data context, which is part of the view model we looked at earlier on. So uh, it is a very comprehensive solution. It is available for a variety of platforms, so it's available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, UWP, iOS, and Android targets these platforms, so Xbox platforms, PlayStation, Switch, and WebGL as well. Uh, now, the one downside right now while we are in beta is sadly your uh, studio, so we can head on over to the studio page right now, the studio is only available right now on Windows. But you can go ahead and download it completely for free. That is the very cool thing here, is if you already are using Noesis Engine, the, the Noesis GUI project, this is just a free add-on to it. That's really awesome. They did not raise the price at all. This is just new and greater functionality. And if you want, you just go ahead and download it. So you come here, even if you're not using the stuff, you just want to check out the tool, see if it would work for your, for your personal needs. Just come here, you can download it completely free, no requirements at all. So uh, very cool uh, tool for creating game UIs, uh, kind of a one-of-a-kind product at this point in time. They've also got a number of training videos that can walk you through to actually how to go about using these products. So if you're interested in learning more, they do have those training materials available. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Noasis GUI Studio, a new free product that runs on top of the Noasis GUI uh, UI suite, an excellent product. I highly recommend checking it out. And let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.